Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistad. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media. So this month I wanted to take a little bit of time and look at automation and using automation creatively and creating movement and excitement and interest in your tracks. And there's a lot of ways we can do that beyond just automating levels or whatnot. And if you find any of this useful, definitely check out my new course, Creative Automation in Logic Pro X, which is now available on ADSR. And I've just created a basic synth pad here because this is a great way to, to show how to automate a couple parameters and get some real motion in a part without necessarily having you know to go into the, the synth and, and really fool with the basic tones too much. And it's just a nice secondary option to have when you're trying to create space. When we're trying to create movement with automation, uh, we're primarily looking to create interest so the part is evolving over time and has something new for the listener. And also maybe to add some energy, whether it's energy through motion or energy through adding new textures. And also maybe as, as a track progresses to look at creating or filling space as other elements are coming in and out of the track. And a real simple way to do this, the way I got started here in this video, is I just laid out this basic simple pad. And I've just done a really, really quick basic routing here. In fact, I should probably name those. Pad left, pad right. And then I'm also gonna come over here and call the main pad and center. So you notice I have this fader all the way down. I'm sending out two different buses, bus 15 and 16, and both pad L and pad R are coming in on those tracks. And to start out, we're just going to go ahead and pan these hard. And now with this one all the way down, I have these set to pre-fader. We're getting pretty much the exact same thing as this stereo one. However, there's not any crosstalk necessarily happening on the channel. This gives us the ability to kind of almost do a mid-side type of processing in terms of looking at the sound from a, a center and a left and right. And we can create all kinds of motion through there. And with that basic routing setup, the next thing I want to do is add these into my range window so I can manipulate them. And that's going to be to select them and control T. They show up right there. And so now we can access automation lanes for any of them as well. I like to marquee select each one of those points. And you can do this actually to all of them at once. Come up here. Just select them all. And this is a real handy way to add those breakpoints. Really helpful if you're in Automation Bar and make sure you're in Snap Automation. And now we can easily come in and start manipulating different parameters. So a marquee selection at whatever point you want. And then just a quick pull of the mouse. And maybe every bar is enough. Let's go down to every beat here. And it's really simple to just add a couple of these. So I just marquee select, extend it upwards, and grab my mouse to add those breakpoints real efficiently. All right, and so one of the first things we can do is come in here and add some, say, some motion breakpoints. We just come through and do some quick deleting. And that's a real subtle one. And both sides of the exact same, currently the exact same patch, are just moving in time, moving across the stereo. And they're coordinated. The more variations we introduce in one side or the other, or how much we offset variations between the sides, is going to cause this panning motion to actually create all kinds of different interesting sounds. And that's before we even bring in our main synth. So one thing we could try to do is maybe select these, go to volume, and look at maybe adding points offsetting. And so that one starts there, this one starts there. We're still going to do them every bar, but this one is starting at, at two beats. And maybe even just some subtle variations now. One thing I like to do is just introduce a kind of a dip. Let's see what we got. And so that one's got a little bit of a jump to it. If we want to accentuate those jumps, we can keep these really sharp curves. However, what I tend to do at this point, I like to probably get rid of these and actually turn them into curves. And so we're probably at the drop point right there. So now.
And just playing with some of these now can really change the interest. If we go off to say a different bar, we're gonna get some different variations in terms of the interplay between them. And you might get some really interesting offsets. You can also try loosening them up a little bit, perhaps using your automation curve tool to create some interesting moves like this. Either way you wanna go. So things are off time, they're swelling, but we definitely hear a heck of a lot more motion. Well, now I have some subtle motion moving in some multiple dimensions, in and out, as well as a little bit of variation up and down on the left and right channels. And because we have all that, if we introduce that center pad, we're going to get all kinds of neat um, changes. So all I've done here is I've just added two different EQ curves to my two left, right, and center. And then because I'm bringing another signal, they're gonna be a little hot. So I'm gonna trim them both down minus six, just something so they're not spiking. Now when I bring this in, we can really hear that come to life. In fact, I'm just gonna bring this up here. There, and we'll keep it at a constant. And the more we bring that in, just like in a mid-side processing for audio, we're going to get that cancellation that's going to cause these swells. And if we need to come in and adjust, all we have to do is come here and turn on our relative volume, which is that symbol here, and we could actually create breakpoints for these as well. And if we need to bring them down, problem solved. And because we can change this automation over the sections and different parts over time, we've got a lot of cool options. So this is worth exploring, and without even getting into drastic uh, mutes or jumps, we're getting all kinds of interesting motion that we can just change by lessening the amount of this or changing the, the nature of the, the panning or the volume changes. Hopefully that's something useful for you, and if you like it, please do consider checking out the Creative Automation and Logic Pro X course that just came out. All right, I'm Stephen Elstead for ADSR. Uh, thanks a lot. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time.